So bones. So we're going to start using. I mean, start this topic here, and we'll see how how far we can get today. The expectation operator itself, we have already seen one or two bounds earlier when we first started listing the properties of expectation. It, has, it turns out there are a lot of interesting bounds you can write. <coughs> you may have heard of the Chebyshev inequality, for example. If you have taken a course uh, in, in, from the maths department, you definitely have run into Chebyshev inequality, which is an example of one of these things. Right? Okay. So well, let's see what what inequalities we can generate. The, 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 and it turns out these are all general inequalities. There's no we're not going to make any assumptions other than the, uh, uh, the existence of the expectation itself. Right? So it will not be specific to any distribution. Let's say the first one. We've already said this, right? Let g of x be greater than or equal to zero for all x in omega x, some random variable x. Then this is already mentioned. This is definitely non-negative. This is right something which I said right in the beginning itself. Follows directly from the definition of the Lotus principle, which defines this quantity here. So, how do you apply this to two functions, g1 and g2? Supposing g1 is always uh, uh, never be uh, smaller than g2, then what can you say about? Let us say we have two functions g1 x and g2 x such that g1 is always bigger than g2 for all x in omega x. Then what can you say about how, how will you write something like this? Hmm? Huh? The difference, right? It is always non negative. So then what, what will this be bounded by? Lower bounded by E of? So the nice thing about this is that individually these can be positive or negative, it does not matter, but this will always be bigger than this. So this is ordering of real numbers, remember, right? So this is stand, uh, just the standard ordering we do for real numbers. Less negative, more negative is, is, same, is also inequality going this way. Okay. So this we have already seen. So this is, I am going to put a recall this against this. So this is number 1 in some sense. Then the second one or I should maybe use, a z, I use 0 in it, does not matter. Okay. The second one is actually a more basic version of Chebyshev's inequality. Got Markov bond. No, I do not think I should write Markov. Unlike Chebyshev, which is definitely named after a person, I'm not sure about where the uh, uh, where this moniker, where this thing came from. But anyway, it's the name by, by which this bound goes. So we have to know it by by its name. So let a x be some non-negative random variable, right? So it non-negative, right? So it does not take negative values with some e of x. So basically, the Markov bound, like the Chebyshev bound, what is the idea here? We're trying to bound the tail probability of e of a of x. So what is the tail probability? This p of x greater than equal to a. This is the tail probability. It turns out. For a non-negative random variable with some with finite e x, this tail probability is upper bounded by what? E of x divided by a. For any a greater than zero, pick a real number a bigger than zero, and this tail probability x greater than equal to a. This is written this way with an equality here and here also. But this bound of course is useful only if what? This quantity is less than 1. So you do not want to pick an A which is 2 to what? 
too small. If you pick an A which is too small, then E of x divided by A will be bigger than 1, it does not help. So, A has to be at least as big as E of x, A should be bigger than E of x. So, it is useful for A bigger than E of x. So, the, the proof of this is actually uh, in somewhat in, uh, instructive, so let us uh, quickly look at it. In other words, if I have some non uh, some uh, some PDF like this, does not matter Rayleigh or whatever, I am this is true for by the way of uh, irrespective of whether x is continuous or discrete, but I am just looking at the uh, you know discrete continuous example here. This is f x and this is x. So, supposing E x is some number here and I pick an A out here, I am inter interested in this probability. Okay, this is the probability I want to bound using this. Okay, so, it turns out that the proof is one, one version of the proof is to write this split this integral for E x into two different parts. The integral which goes from 0 to infinity, I will split into two parts, which two parts 0 to a and a to infinity. I can always split an integral, can I not? You know how to combine integrals, you can also split them. If somebody gives you 0 to a, a to infinity, you know, how, oh yeah, there is nothing but 0 to infinity. If somebody gives you 0 to infinity, yes, it also has to be written, it can always be written as 0 to a and then a to infinity. So, this is the integral from 0 to a of x f x dx plus what? The integral from, from what? a to, a to infinity. In general, I am assuming that there is an infinite tail, otherwise the bound is not really, it, it will be true, but typically it is applied only if uh, in, in an example like exponential or Rayleigh with the, where the tail is infinite. The same integrand x f x x dx. So, in this, this is some non negative quantity, this is some non negative quantity. So, if I leave out this first term, what will I, what kind of a bound will I get? I will get this to be greater than only this part. So, the first step is to say this E of x is at least is no smaller than the second integral. I know that A is arbitrarily chosen, so A can be chosen wherever there is no relationship between A and E of x. I am just writing, just to make it useful, I am putting A to the right of E of x, but it need not be like that, right? Like A can be anywhere. The mathematics does not care whether the bound is useful or not. So, this is greater than this. And then what do I do here? If I substitute this x, if I put A in place of x, See, in throughout this integral, what is x? x is at least a. So, if I and it is always everything is non negative or even positive, you can say. So, if I put x, if I put a in place of x, what happens? I get one more lower, uh, lower bound, right? So, this is another, so it is a double, two, uh, right? A two level bounding here. So, remember when you write a sequence of uh, equalities and inequalities, if this was equal to something, you should only put equals here. You should use this greater than only if this quantity is again smaller than this. Do not use right uh, this bound unless this is really smaller than this. And then you go back through the chain of inequalities you wrote and then relate this to the last thing. If you have a, 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 less, a bound even in one place, then you have a bound everywhere. Right, the final two things are also related by that inequality. Right? Is that clear? That is, if this is equal to something, put equals here. Don't put, but here it's not going to be equal because I'm going to replace this x by a. In other words, I'll write it here. Can I put a QE, QED at this point? Can I put QED there? Yes, I can because 
this A will come out and what remains is nothing but P of x greater than or equal to A. It is to make this thing fit the discrete case also that all these greater than or equal to and all are put there, right. So, to make this universally valid for discrete and continuous all these uh, uh, greater than or equal to here and less than or equal to are needed. But if you strictly do only the continuous case you can leave out the equals but, but it is not written like that. So, this is A times P of x greater than or equal to A. So, what did we have? E of x is no smaller than A times P of x greater than or equal to A therefore Q E D. Okay, last thing today, how do you get equality here? You get equality if and only if A equal, uh, if x itself is a constant equal to E of x and you choose A to be that constant. Then in that case this will be 1, this will also be 1. So, with that we will end today's lecture. All of these cases right equality is you have to look for equality also. So, equality is achievable in the degenerate case when x is just a constant and you choose a to be exactly that constant. So, that is a discrete uh, is a degenerate discrete case right x always is takes that one value and you take a to be that value. So, that this is 1 that is why this equals is important if you leave out this equals and this will become 0. So, this is the statement of the bound we saw the um, <coughs> a proof for a purely continuous x yesterday but it turns out it is equally valid for any uh, distribution which is defined over the positive real line right it could be discrete or or mixed in your in the other terminology right not purely continuous still this bound is <coughs> is valid. Uh, just know that it is loose the bound is loose for for distributions like what PDFs like exponential and so on why why so because this falls how does this tail probability fall for such PDFs it falls exponentially in the case of exponential it falls in fact as e power minus x squared in the Rayleigh case also right. So, you can you can in fact get an exact expression for the Rayleigh because of that x in the uh, multiplying the e power mi minus x squared term is not it. So, you find that if you do the calculation exactly you this is going to fall very very fast with with this a whereas this how is this uh, falling with a it is only as 1 by a. So, obviously, the bound is loose. The bound is somewhat better better for uh, PDFs which have longer tails like for example, this uh, C by x cubed this tighter for f x of x is some alpha not call it alpha alpha by x cubed. Now, I, why do I want x cubed uh, let us say x greater than 1 right. <coughs> Why do I want this uh, x cubed and not x squared? If I put x squared, there is no mean value, mean value is infinity, right. So, for the mean value to be finite, I want to have at least some power of x bigger than 2. So, I will take 3. So, if you if you plug it in here, you will find that this probability, how do you how do you think this will behave with respect to with a? Hmm? What will be the fall? Uh, how will the tail probability behave? It will fall off as 1 by a squared. 1 by a squared is about the best you can I mean uh, sorry ok 1 by a squared here and this this will be of the order of 1 by a. So, turns out that uh, for polynomial PDFs which are heavier tail than than these right the tail is much uh, uh, probability in the tail is much much is much higher ok. So, um, now you might think is this the restriction of non negative random variable is it is it uh, is it very strong actually it is not because you can convert you can look at mod x for any random variable x mod x is non negative. So, if a e of x e of x exists means e of mod x also has to exist. So, therefore, um, so another uh, statement you can make directly from here itself is that 
probability of mod x bigger than a is going to be upper bounded by what? This is a non negative random variable. So, what is this going to be upper bounded by? All I have to do is substitute the same mod x here. And uh, I can also go if I, if I know that e of x squared exists, I can write x squared bigger than a is what? Uh, if I know e of x squared is finite, x squared is also non negative. So it is going to be upper bounded by e of x squared divided by a and so on and so forth. All I need in any of these is that a is positive, that is all. <clears throat> Whether it is useful or not, I leave it to you to decide. Right. Now, in the spirit of this x squared bigger than a, we have the Chebyshev inequality. It actually comes from trying to do a little, uh, uh, put a little twist on that, right. This is my spelling of Chebyshev. That is a very famous inequality. Um, in our, uh, uh, introduce pr pretty much every student of probability, right? <coughs> and uh, usually they don't even they may not the books may not even give this, but they surely mention this, right? This is the spelling which is most natural, and this is a person, right? We all know that there's a Russian mathematician of this name who, whose name is used here, right? We said y equal to x minus m x squared for some random variable x. With what? With finite variance, finite mx and m, mx and sigma x squared. Finite mean and variance. That means e of x squared or e of, of the variance, they're all finite. Okay, and clearly the variance exists. The mean also will exist. <coughs> so this is a non-negative random variable. Why? Right? It's in the spirit of this. Right now, supposing I choose instead of calling it, uh, what did I want to say? I want to uh, supposing I say apply the Markov. Applying Markov bound gives what? We get e of sorry probability of um, this x minus m x the whole squared. Right. Bigger than equal to let me instead of writing it as a, I will write it as a squared just to be able to take the square root. This is going to be up, upper bounded by what? What is the expected value of this quantity? Sigma x squared, right? So, what will be the RHS here? I am writing a squared, right, instead of a, which is all. So, it is sigma x squared by a squared. And a squared, anyway, is non negative, I do not have to worry about, right, or positive. All I need, I should not do is, there is no, you know, avoid a equal to 0, that is all. Now, this event, x minus mx uh, squared bigger than or equal to a squared, can be written in, if you take square root, and you take the positive square root of this a squared which is a, assume that a is positive again, this becomes mod of x minus m x. The absolute value of, so it is actually a sum of the probabilities on both sides, both right, both the right tail as well as the left tail. <coughs> on the right hand side is totally unchanged. So, this is a statement of the classical textbook statement of Chebyshev's inequality, which basically relates if you take for example, the Gaussian, you take this, uh, let us say you take this is mx, right, I mean x, it could be, um, okay, okay, you can have 0 here, it does not matter. So, I have this uh, x minus mx more than, so this is mx plus a, I have this tail and I also have some tail out here. What is sorry, what did I want to put here? This is mx plus a. 
right and out here I will have this point will be what m x minus a right. So, mod of that is the distance uh, the, the distance should be bigger than a. So, I have to look at all those points x such that the distance between x and m x is bigger than a. So, anything which is to the left of this or to the right of this 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 tail plus the, 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 the sum of these two is upper bounded by this and because it involves both tails, all of these also involve both tails by the way this in this is only the positive part because we have defined it to be non negative but both of these are versions of this in some sense especially this anyway so this is just for completeness sake right it, uh, there is no uh, question that the chebyshev inequality is a, a very special case of this and we don't have to spend too much time on it so uh, so but the intuition behind markov bound at least you people should think about it a little more and and uh, especially for the discrete case and so on please go and check it out how this bound happens because this is the fundamental bound and you, uh, it is used in many many places uh, in uh, in the theory right this is not i mean this used to be more important i think than it is now but but it has some historical value so we included in the uh, presentation right